two, three. We are live, guys. We are live. Let's let let's let a few people come in here, Beth. I'm gonna refresh my screen. You can too. Um, and then it should be popped up where you can click the chat. There it is. So just refresh, and that way I can see um, everybody in chat here. Oh, we already have people in here. Already have some thumbs up. That's amazing. All right, guys. Give me two seconds here, and then we're gonna go live. Sorry, here. Um, okay, cool. All right, guys. Welcome to Wade's Ventures YouTube channel. It's a Monday, and you guys know what that means. It is going live on our channel, and the point of this is to uh, invite amazing people that are in the community, just like yourselves, that used to be in chat and now they're live to kind of go over their life. And uh, so I've got Beth on here. Beth, go ahead and introduce yourself, and then we're going to give some people in chat some shout outs. Hi, I'm Beth Ann Bishop, and I live in Houston, Texas. And no pressure. It's great to be here. I just met Wade about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> uh, guys, there is a fabulous. Oh, there's my daughter, Krista. Hi, Krista. Oh, really? Yeah, well, hello, she's uh, in the hill country of Texas. Nice, nice. Well, let's give some shout outs here. Let me do, do you see chat by the way, Beth? Yes, I do. Okay, how about you give some shout outs? Uh, I see Steph M and Mona's Dragons. Hi, hello, Rita Lopez and Flipping Daily. Nice to see you, thanks for joining us. And we have Mr. Pac-Man. Now guys, I'll spend two seconds on this. I got this amazing, those of you who are on Instagram that followed me, I don't know if you guys followed me, but I got two amazing brand new hats and this shirt, from Pac-Man that's in chat. And it was so incredibly humbling, handwritten notes. Um, those of you know, I, I've got my address down below in every single video I do. Some people send me stuff on box, some people send me letters, some people send me coupons. And I was extremely blessed to get these hats because he obviously knows what, what um, brand I love. And so I just wanna say, I appreciate it, buddy. I made you moderator because I trust you and you're amazing. So thank you so much for that. And to everybody else who's who sent me cool stuff, I really appreciate it. Um, so this is gonna be a very awesome interview, guys. I'm super excited to have Beth on here. She's got some really killer stuff to, to bring to the table and just her life intertwined with eBay and, and selling online. So um, you guys are gonna be in for a good one. We've got 45 people watching. Beth, everybody knows your name, but give us a little background. Give us a little story on yourself. Uh, how much time do you have? <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I got started on eBay uh, a very different way than other people. I um, was writing a novel about 15 years ago, and I'd been working on it about 10 years, and everything was going really well until I got to the editing part. And I have OCD, which is obsessive compulsive disorder. And um, I check things. I don't, I don't check doors and ovens and things like that, but I just check things that are written, things that I see. And so when I went to edit my book, I could not come up with a finished product. I kept changing things and changing things and getting really down about it. And so I hung up my author's hat and I was looking for something else to do with my time, something that would give me a reward for all the hard work I was doing. And so my friend Jamie, shout out to Jamie, who's probably in here. We were at Value Village one day just thrifting and I noticed that she was throwing things in her cart that I knew they were not for her. And so I said, what are you gonna do with all that? And she goes, oh, I think I'm gonna try to sell it on eBay. And I have a reselling background and I was like, hey, I could do that. So I went literally ran around Value Village and I was just throwing crap in my cart. I, this is a cute purse, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sell it on eBay. Oh, these are some cute shoes, I'm gonna sell it on eBay. I mean, you just not believe the stuff that I threw in my cart. Um, I went to a uh, church sale the next day and spent $30 and put everything on eBay. And my first sale was a tiny little, it was about the size of a quarter, it was a football helmet. Someone paid $7.99 for that thing. I paid about two cents for it and I was hooked after that. And then I started realizing that eBay was allowing me to fill a need that I had of checking. So like I can check my, my views, my watchers, my sales, my stats. I can check other eBay bayers, um, 
you know, their stores and see what they're selling, what they're interested in. So it's just check, 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 check. And so it was like, oh, my OCD almost like magically went away. I mean, it was that fast. So I eBay for that reason. Now it keeps me calm. It makes me happy and it's fulfilling. You know what? Um, I, I, I understand a little bit where you come from, like OCD, you've got to constantly be doing something. You're somewhat of a busy body. And um, I think it's really cool that you find relief selling on eBay. Cause there's, there's so many different tiers. Like you, you thrift for the item. You got to like, you know, prepare the item. You've got to sell the item. You got to list the item. You know, you've got to ship the item. Like there's so many steps that keeps you busy. So I think it's really cool. Are you part-time, full-time, Beth? Give us a little story on that. I am part-time. I have an eight to five job. I work nine hour days and my commute total is about two hours. So I don't have a lot of time to put into this, unfortunately. That, that's and I would also goal. like, uh, that's another thing I'd like to address on my channel is um, to reach out to the community of resellers who are doing this part-time. They're not trying to become mega sellers. Um, you know, maybe in the future they want to be mega sellers, but for right now they are, you know, just trying to build their business up, maybe do it as a hobby or to fulfill some need in their life. Um, they might have a medical issue that keeps them from the world that, this could this could really literally save you it saved me mm -hmm. and um it's it's common like you know my new moderator in chat he's got that nice wrench um he works 50 to 60 hours too so it's really common to get people that work really hard you know at their daily job and then on top of that they're doing ebay on the side to make extra income and i think it's it's amazing it's it's a way that you can you know pay extra bills or, or go on vacations or just have more freedom uh, what state are you living in, Beth? Because the reason I ask this question is I kind of like to know where you're thrifting at. Um, well, I'm in Houston, Texas. And unfortunately, that's one of my issues as working full time because I find that if I go thrifting at 530 in the evening, everything's been picked over. Um, most of the garage sales in our area start on Thursdays and Fridays. I can't go on Thursdays and Fridays. I work. So it's really difficult to get quality items at a decent price. I've been buying wholesale recently. That's helped me a lot. Um, but I'm still not getting the, the wholesale. The prices are pretty high, so I'm not making as much back. So we have Thrifty oh. Treasures in chat. She's yeah, I, I've talked to Thrifty Treasures. She probably doesn't remember me. <laughs> she, she, I think she's just up the road in Kingwood or Spring, I think. You, you better watch out if you got if there's jewelry at a garage sale. So you can there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so how long you said you've been selling for quite a while on eBay? How did you learn about eBay? How did you learn you can sell online? Say that again. Uh, there's a little feedback, but how did you learn about selling online? Like, how did you learn about eBay? Well, I just learned from my friend. Like I said, um, she just basically walked me through it. I mean, when I sold that little football helmet, I had no idea how to how to send it. I was calling her up like, I don't even know what to do. <laughs> and then I just started watching YouTube basically and um, learning that way. And I love to learn. I mean, I could be a college student for the rest of my life. So that's another thing that really feeds me is just constantly learning. Um, I use Evernote. I don't know if anyone knows what Evernote is, but it's a, it's an app that you can use on your phone, your laptop, and it keeps everything together for me. So anything I learn, I put it in Evernote. And um, I, I can be out anywhere and I can just look it up. Is know? that a website? Um, Evernote.com is a website, but it's also an app you can put on your phone. Oh. And it syncs it thinks automatically. So no matter where I am, I can get that information uh, quickly. If I need, um, you know, different hat styles, I'll just pull it up. I don't have to go to Pinterest. I have it already there, you know, in a certain uh, way that I can find it quickly. I don't have to go to pa uh, Pinterest and search. Um, I have all my, um, another thing I have is um, my best offers. I have my best offers written out so that if I'm at work and I get an offer, I don't have to sit there and calculate, well, how much am I going to make on this? It's free shipping. It's a pair of jeans. I have it right there and I can, it'll, I can look at it and I can say, oh yeah, I can accept that offer. That's and another thing that I use at work is I use a droid watch, a fossil watch. Some people have um, Apple watches and I don't want to get in trouble for looking on eBay all the time. So 
whenever I get an offer in, my watch goes off and I can just quickly, you know, go to the restroom or whatever, take my phone in there and see what's the deal. You know, someone, I, cause I want to respond to an offer right away. I don't want to wait two hours to my lunch break. And, and I would, Beth, I, I think this is, um, <clears throat> I don't, I can't prove this, but I'm pretty positive that eBay tracks how responsive you are to your messages. Mm -hmm. And I think it all goes in the algorithm. You know, if you're responsive to your messages, if you're quick to your buyers, it just makes sense that they would have that built in. Um, so that's really, really cool. Art, now give us a little bit of back background on you. Like, and I kind of want to get like, I like to get personal a little bit with my interviews so people can get to know you, the reseller. So I know you have a wife, like, well, how's your, how's your life? Like, do you have brothers and sisters? Um, give us a little bit of background on you on that regard. Um, yeah, I have a younger brother who works for ABC and Disney, and he travels all over the world photographing. Um, he's got an awesome job. Um, I have a little niece, his daughter. She's Abigail. She's six. She's beautiful. I have two beautiful daughters in their 20s. One is expecting the first baby in September. So we're really excited about that. My grandmother's 101 years old, so I have really good genes. And um, my parents are not far away up in Conroe. I think Thrifty Treasures would know where that is. So. Yeah, I, I had to interview you guys. If you don't know, I had to interview with Thrifty, uh, Tanya. And uh, it was- We rescue dogs. We rescue dogs around here. That's so. awesome. <laughs> that is really cool. How do you, do you, you rescue them and then you find, um, do you find, you know, um, homes for them or how does yeah, that we work? Keep them. We have two, we keep them. <laughs> I'm trying to get another one, but I'm being told no. <laughs> I can only have two is what I'm being told. One's having dental surgery tomorrow, so a little stressed out about that. But he's a distemper survivor, and so he has really bad uh, teeth. So we're hoping that he will be able to keep some of his teeth. Bless his heart. So, guys, if you have questions in chat, I will definitely answer them. Beth will definitely answer them. She's been doing this for a while. So if you guys have questions, put it in chat. Um, Thrifty Treasures, they're both terriers. One looks like Toto. Her name's Callie, and the one with the distemper, um, his name is Finn. We call him Finny, and he has a really bad um, head bob and tick. He has uh, neurological issues. So we and, and Callie has anxiety issues like I do. So we have two special needs dogs. My daughter Krista in the chat will tell you they are very, very time consuming. <laughs> I can imagine. And do they, they, I mean, I, I don't know much about dental work on animals, but um, so they're going to put new feelings in or are they going to pull teeth? How does that work? They're going to pull teeth, but first they're going to do x-rays to see what else needs to be done. He's obviously got some really major stuff going on. So we know definitely he has some teeth that need to be pulled. But when we, before we got him, when he was a year old, they'd already pulled six or seven out. So he doesn't have that many now. So I'm just hoping that he, he they can save some because he likes his chewies. <laughs> yeah. Our mama better make some good mashed potatoes. Yeah, I make all their food anyway, but even then it's got chunks in it. So I'm gonna need my food processor out tomorrow night to really grind it down. <laughs> That's awesome. It's really cool that you, you know, not only care for the community, you care for your, you know, stray animals and dogs and and so uh, that's really, really cool. How, tell us yeah, a little bit. You'll see pictures of them on my YouTube channel. I usually put them at the end of my video. And that's a great point. I'm actually going to put, um, I've got Beth's YouTube channel. So I put a bunch of links in there throughout this interview. I'll put her YouTube channel in and uh, you guys go subscribe. That's the point of this is the point of this is to find amazing talent and then show them to a good group of people. And yeah, and so be can, kind. I'm still le learning to look at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny, guys. Before we went live, she's like, okay, where should I look? And she put a smiley face up on the... Uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so... Here we go. So what, are, what platforms are you selling on right now? Are you selling primarily on eBay? <sighs> okay, everything I have listed is on eBay. And then I have some things listed on Poshmark. And that's what I use my SKU label for. So in front of my... Um, item number, I'll have PM for Poshmark so that I know that if I sell it on eBay, I need to run over to Poshmark and, and delete it. 
I also have anything that's handmade or uh, vintage. I'm trying to cross post to Etsy. And then just this past week, I started listing on Mercari. So that's four. So now I'm having to put Mercari and PM in my SKU. But I'm thinking about what I'm thinking about doing right now is some of the things that are on auction that are not getting, you know, sold. I may put them on Mercari and see if I have better luck. Um, because if you go through the things that you're having to auction off, that tells you what not to buy anymore. You know, like I have some of the most amazing blazers and everybody else seems to be able to sell blazers, but they are on auction for, you know, go on over there, 99 cents, $1.99. I can't understand why they won't sell. So I just bypass the blazer section now when I go into a store and, um, I don't know. I don't know why they don't sell. Victoria's Secret used to sell great for me. And now I can't give it away because it's just so saturated. So. Yep. And do you, um, <clears throat> that's a good point. So you were just saying, if put it on auction, if it doesn't sell, then it kind of, kind of gives you an idea of what not to buy. Mm -hmm. um, it's really weird. Sometimes I'll get items that I have that are lower value and um, I'll, I won't be able to sell them, but then I'll bump the price up and then I'll sell. Mm -hmm. It's weird. It's really weird how that happens. I've done that before. Yep. Um, so what tells people you, think there's something wrong with it when it's 99 cents and it's this beautiful blazer, yep. you know, and I'm not making any money off them. I'm actually losing money, but I'm writing it off as an advertising because it's bringing people to my store. So, you know, so I don't are, do promoted listings anymore. So I just auction things. What, what are you passionate about selling? What if you can sell anything on eBay and make decent profit, what would it be? Oh, uh, things from different parts of the country and the world. Um, like, you know, when people go to on a cruise and then they get home and they're like, dang it, I should have bought a t-shirt from Princess Cruise Lines. You know, they can just go on eBay and there it is. I mean, I, I have a lot of that on my store and I've sold a lot of souvenirs from places that people have gone or a place that's special to them. Um, that's all I like to do that. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, like, Travel I, destinations is actually one of my categories in my store that I'd like to build up. It sells. Oh, I don't know how many times. I, I promise you, I can go to three Goodwills right now. And I'll find Nike, new with tags, but their company logos on them, and nobody picks them up. Um, I've sold two Enterprise car rental shirts mm -hmm. used. And you would think, well, who would buy an Enterprise, uh, Inter Enterprise car rental shirt? Mm -hmm. And people buy that. I, I sold... Um, um all kinds of like uh, hot sauce nike shirts those of you who don't know um nike will put your company logo and you can purchase shirts from nike and other you know columbia and other stuff and i people get scared off on that and i, I buy them right away and put them online and put nike and then the company name that is on the shirt people love that stuff and a lot of times it's so much cheaper because it has the company name on it so goodwill doesn't put it extremely high price it's incredible. Like I, um, what was it? I picked up hot sauce or four hot sauce shirts, brand new tags, Nike. Um, I picked up a Fred Meyer, which is basically like a um, grocery shirt that sold. Um, I sold car um, enterprise car rentals. I've sold um, uh, what was it? Um, was that a Netflix shirt? I don't know. Anyways, it's guys. If you see the stuff with company logos, don't be afraid to pick it up. They're amazing. And that's a good tip too. Princess Cruises, like Beth was saying, that stuff flies off the shelf too. I sold mm -hmm. one of those fleece jackets. From Princess Mugs, the shirts. Um, I've sold all of my McDonald's uniforms, Sonic uniforms. I just bought a Kroger t-shirt the other day. Uh, people use them for Halloween costumes, um, play, you know, skits. Uh, or is it just, I sold a Foley's mug. I don't even know if you know what Foley's is, but it was a department store here in Houston and it, it closed up years and years ago. And I bought this Foley's mug. It was so ugly and everyone's like, that's not going to sell. Man, that sold so fast because, you know, some old lady that worked there 50 years ago, someone bought that for her for a present. I mean, it, it things like that really do sell. Some of them are very long tail, but it's so neat when you, sell it to someone who, and it's really special to them. So I've got a really deep question for you, Beth. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> How, I'm putting you on the spot. How has reselling changed your life? Like how has it changed your family's life? How has 
making money online changed your life? I mean, I know it's helped you with the OCD stuff, but give us a little in depth. How how's it changed your life? Well, it's made my house a lot messier. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I've taken over the garage now. Um, I don't know. It's just given me a purpose, you know. I, it's just given me a purpose, something to do. Um, I'm not one to just sit and watch TV and things like that. So I'm always on the computer. I'm always doing something. It just keeps me busy, keeps me out of trouble. And, and guys, I, I had to walk away for a second just to show this again not part of our haul video but so you see guys this is new with tags um nike right and i don't have the goodwill sticker on here anymore i don't uh, but um i paid six bucks for them they're brand new and it's got the hot sauce company on there so somebody's going to pick this up because they like the hot sauce and um you know I'm, I'm looking to get like and you can even price these a little high too um, because there's probably not a lot of them out there. So I'm going to price this at like 33 bucks. I know it sounds crazy and I'll take a best offer of 25 and sell it all day long. So just keep that in mind guys. I would Go. like to address flipping dailies. Um, yeah. He mentioned, he's saying, don't forget thieves and terrorists walk in the door with logo clothing. I will say that I never buy any UPS shirts or anything like that because of that. I, I don't want to be a part of someone pretending to be a UPS person and walking in and, robbing someone yeah so i am kind of particular about that yeah oh be careful of that um yeah uh, police anything has a police badge or even looks like a security company i don't i don't even bother so, so it looks like your daughter said you get yeah i do get free trips because i get to write them off because i go to the hill country to see her and we go thrifting and yeah it's amazing. fun we have a great time <laughs> you taught your daughter how to sell on ebay she doesn't seem interested. I'm not really sure why. I try really? to get her interested. Her hubby has a lot of really cool stuff he could sell. Nice. A lot of Walking Dead and things like that. But I don't know. Now, do you do you watch? Uh, I try to get her to take photos for me too. She's just too busy. <laughs> do, do you do you watch Beth? Do you watch 10K on the Bay? Have you heard of his YouTube channel? Yes, I do. Oh, I, I thought I saw him in here, but who's this daily refinery? Uh, refinery? <laughs> he changed his name. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, he did. I thought it was an impersonator. Hi, Chris. You don't know me, but I, I love your videos. Can I shout out to a couple other people I watch? Please. please like. Okay. That was Lindy, Glenn, Lindy Glenn, first, first and foremost. And uh, Casey Rockstar Flipper has just been a blessing to me. He has helped me so much. I recently started watching uh, The Pudgy Picker. And I love her. Her name's Jen. Um, and also Flippin' Hippos. Hi, Star. I told you I'd shout out to you. She's got some really good content going. She just started recently as well. So... These are the people I want to meet in person in Las Vegas. <laughs> Can I get um, so I have a question for the chat and I have a question for you, Beth. Um, and I think that's really cool. I, I, I always like to ask this question, who you guys like watching on YouTube? Because I like to discover new people. And I think it's amazing that we can literally go on the internet, type in eBay and you're going to get so many people not only teaching, but showing their journey, much like Chris, much like Casey, much like everybody that's on here. So really awesome community. But I want to ask everybody in chat, especially Tanya, who is going to eBay Open? Because Beth, tell us a little bit about your goal. You're going to eBay Open, or you're trying to go to eBay Open, right? Uh, yes. And I also wanted to say prof sales. Forgot about Jason and uh, Karen. Um, yes, I want to go to eBay Open. Unfortunately, my roommate has had to pull out. And I'm looking for a roommate, but I'm not only looking for a roommate, I'm looking for like a hangout buddy, someone that I can hang out with after the dinners are over, after the conferences are over, so that I'm not stuck just getting bored and going back up to my room and isolating myself because, you know, I don't, I don't like to be alone. I like to be around people. So if there's anyone out there that cares to not only be a roommate, but a hangout buddy, that would be great. I would love to go. Otherwise, I'm not going because I, I'm just not interested in being by myself. <laughs> That's the thing is, you, I, I, I know, I know, I get where people are coming from. So when you're on, 
when you when you meet people online, right? When you meet people on YouTube or, or Instagram, um, sometimes it's hard to communicate in real life. Like when I meet Chris, I'm sure he's gonna be extremely fun to hang out with, but the guy's six foot tall, right? And I'm five ten. So, you know, are we gonna be able to communicate? I don't know. You know, it just it's really cool to meet people online, but sometimes you do get a little timid and I hope I hope that you go to eBay Open. I I too. You, I, it's, I, it's really something I really want to do. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be and, amazing. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna be really totally honest here. And I and I know I told you this earlier, but I don't think I said it live, is that sometimes I feel kind of um, an outsider in the community. I, I love everybody, but I I keep talking to power sellers and people who just want to get rich and build that money and do that ASP. And sometimes I feel kind of left out because that's not where I'm at right now. I mean, I, I do have a goal, a money, uh, a goal for the end of the year that I want to hit. Don't get me wrong, but I'm so tired <laughs> that, you know, I, I have my planner and I stick with it. But I can only do so much in 24 hours. You know, I'm 56 years old. I'm not 27 anymore. So uh, when someone tells me you got to keep working and working harder and working harder, you know, I am doing that at work. <laughs> so I just I really would like to meet some people who are in the same situation that I'm in that are not trying to be these, you know, super seller. I love you super sellers to death. Don't get me wrong. You're great. And you've helped me tremendously. No, I understand. Like, you know, some people are completely fine working really hard at their, their full-time job and doing eBay on the side and don't necessarily need to be power sellers. So, and that's the beautiful thing about eBay or selling online uh, in general on all these platforms, you have the flexibility of going, you know, in, in, in any direction. So I think that's really cool of you. The fact that you're working extremely hard, you've obviously, you know, adopting these amazing furry buddies, you know, you've got a family and um, you're also doing eBay on the side, which is really cool. I want to, I want to ask you this question. What do you get most out of social media? The reason I ask this is I, I'm curious to see how your perception of what value is on social media. Like how is Instagram? Cause I know you've got a really cool Instagram and how has YouTube changed the way you resell? Oh, it just makes it so much more personal. I mean, some of these YouTubers, it's just amazing how they will take time out of their day to talk to you in person, you know, on Instagram through DM. Um, it, it's just amazing that they even have, they find the time to even do that. And then remember your name, you know, and um, I, I want to be that type of YouTuber as well. And in type, type of Instagrammer. So I don't know. I love working with the community and I just, I really, I wanted to, I hate to change subjects, but I did want to mention about the Harvey victims that um, helping people that went through Harvey this year was one of the greatest things I, I was able to do as a reseller <laughs> as well. Yeah. No, give us a little, uh, those well, are what I, what I did was I, I didn't have, you know, money. So what I have is inventory. So I just put something out there and said, Hey, if anyone needs clothing, you know, dress clothes because everything's been ruined, right? Jeans, anything just go. I just gave them a link to my store and then they found things in their size and they just screenshotted them and messaged them to me. And then I just pulled them from my inventory, you know, wrote down what I pay for them and just took them as a tax deduction and then met someplace with the clothing. It was great. It was so easy because people are actually getting what they wanted instead of, you know, going to all these places and there's just all of these clothes that don't fit anyone. And um, so it was really great. Did it like, I love doing awesome things for people. And sometimes you can't necessarily throw money at it. You can only do what you have in front of you. I feel like that's a little bit about what I do with YouTube. Like these interviews are giving people a chance to get in front of a lot of people. Not a lot, a lot, obviously I'm a very tiny YouTube channel, but it gets them a chance to get a little bit more exposure to the end goal. And even though that does not compare at all to the disaster there in Texas and what you did, um, it's giving something, you know, giving some sort of value. And I think that's really cool. What made you come up with that idea? Like, how did you come up with the idea to give inventory away? Did it just pop in your head? Um, well, yeah, it's just when we're watching TV, you know, and, and people are taking things 
things down to these shelters and after a while everybody's saying you know don't bring any more down here we just have too much stuff we know nope, it's it's overwhelming people can go through all of that so then i thought well here's you know i have this store it's in an organized place you got you know by category just go look and see what you want and um you know if it doesn't fit you um then just donate it to someone else but at least you know it's your style and your size and um, you can go back to work the next week, you know, with dress clothes or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think it's really cool. I um, A lot of the clothing that was donated went to waste, I'm afraid. I mean, you can look at our thrift stores and tell that. They just didn't know what to do with it. It was so, it was just, there was just too much of it to organize. Yeah. Well, it's a thought that counts. I think that's really cool that you're mm -hmm. willing to put yourself out there. And and especially when it, you got, you know, I know Tanya wasn't necessarily affected when I was talking with her, but it's, uh, it was, it was pretty bad. Um, so that's really cool that you're able to help out like that. It's, that's awesome. Yeah, we were so fortunate because we did not flood. We, we were about two blocks away, but we had a lot of friends who lost everything. So, so. Beth, real quick, I, I, I like to take feedback. Like if I, one thing that I've learned working for corporate is you have to take feedback and all my viewers say, I joined late to your live stream. We have 80 people watching. I joined late, but um, I didn't get a chance to hear, you know, about you. Can you give like a 30 seconds? Who are you? So people who join late can get to know you. Um, I am a, I work eight to five. I'm a retired teacher and I do eBay on the side to help me with my OCD. It saved my life. Um, please come visit me in my channel. I also like to connect with other resellers who do this um, part time. Still looking for a roommate for eBay Live, and I hope to hope to see you on my channel. And if you have any ideas of things that you want me to discuss on my channel, please let me know. Anything that will help you when you have an eight to five and you have very little amount of time. I have one video on my channel, for instance, of things you can do during your break at work to help your eBay store. That's before I started selling on Poshmark and all that. So it has a lot of, you know, eBay, but it means it's for everything, everything. So. Can you give us a few ideas real quick? Um, I'd have to go back to that. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I had a list of about five things uh, that I would do. I would end uh, things early and, and, and sell similar or relist, just depending on how you do it. For Poshmark, I do all my, you know, my 30 minute method. Um, that everyone knows about sharing things and um, updating, changing, um, changing prices. Um, that's also on Thursdays is when I um, change prices in my store and start sales again. So I usually do that on my lunch hour on Thursdays. Um, there's just a whole lot of things you can do, but you know what? You really need to get an iPhone watch or a Droid watch. It just it keeps you from getting in trouble at work. I'm telling you, because <laughs> I cannot be on my phone at work checking for eBay. Can you guys see? So Beth, can you look at this? So you're on you're on live, right? And then you've yes. got Tanya. Tanya went on live, and then you've got Hip Flip and Mama went on live with me. Flip and Daily went on live with me. Gina went on live with me, and then you've got um. I saw Farm Girl Scavenger in here. She went live with me. Like, you guys are seeing the community at a whole different light. Like, you guys are getting to know each other on a personal level. I think it's really cool that all you guys in chat are talking together because you've all been up here so far. So those of you who are thinking about joining my my show, just do it. Email me, wade at wadesventure.com. I'll send you a link. You'll go live. I still need to get um, – Chris on here with um, Refinement Daily. Uh, I think he is amazing. I want to I want to get back because I've been on his channel a few times. I want to get back to him and get him on my channel. So we'll have to get that scheduled. But everybody, Lisa, everybody in chat right now, you guys need to come on here. And uh, so I I, I want to ask you this, Beth. Um, what kind of because I, I know that I'm I see the lights in your back room there. So do you have any? Any hacks or tricks or anything that helps you on your eBay journey that you can give to the uh, audience here? Um, well, I have um, because I work so much, I get really, really tired. And so one of my tricks is that I draft first before I do anything. And then I take my pictures and load my pictures 
um, and cross post at the same time. And when I do that, I'm re reviewing my drafts to make sure I haven't made any errors because I'm terrible. The worst thing I do is listing. I'm terrible at it. And it it's because I'm tired and I catch so many mistakes. So I never just sit down and list an item from scratch and hit list. I always draft it first and it has saved me so many times. I cannot tell you how many mistakes I've made. So many. So um, I try to sell a pair of shorts. I think that's also on my um, channel for $3,000 and I didn't catch it. I mean, I actually put $3,000, I think it was, and it was on my, my store for, I don't know how long, you know, and just things like that, you know? So that's when I started doing the drafts. <laughs> so, so give us a day in the life of you real quick. I, I, so when you get items, you thrift the items, do you take, because what I do is I'll take pictures with my phone mm -hmm. and then I will upload it from my phone to the app and then I'll go to my computer and then finish like 30 or 40 of them. How do you do it? Okay, so let's say I have like uh, 30 pairs of jeans and um, what I do is I draft them and I look up the prices. I put everything, the title, the prices, everything except the pictures, okay? And, um, and I put... Um, little index cards with numbers so that when I take the pictures, I take a picture of 40 and then I take a picture of the, of the jeans. And then the next one's 30. I take a picture of the jeans. And that way, when I'm looking, all the jeans look alike. But when I see 30, I know I've got the right pair of jeans. I take the phone. This is probably the hard way to do it, but I'm just not really that challenged. I take the phone, I plug it into my computer and I just dump it into a folder. That's photos, um, April 2nd, 2018. And that's the folder that I work off of. And I list from my computer only because, you know, I have bad eyes now and it's just really hard for me to do it on the phone. So I like to have my laptop. Um, I might revise something from my phone, but I never list from my phone. What is your, um, I, I didn't ask this question, but what is your significant other? What does she think about you selling on eBay? Does she think, have you tried to teach her how to sell on eBay at all? Like she's not interested at all. Um, she did have some jewelry, some native American jewelry that we were selling for a while. And I just, I didn't like doing it. I hate photographing jewelry. So we stopped for now. Um, but she's not interested at all, but she has no problem with me doing it other than the house is just, it, it's just overrun with eBay. I'm trying really hard to keep it isolated, but um, she's very patient with me and she sees that it's really helped me and changed me. So she knows I'm happier. Super supportive then. Yeah. She's very supportive. Um, I mean, she does kind of roll her eyes when I tell her I'm going thrifting again. It's like, <laughs> why you already have all this, but um, I don't have very big death piles. I go through my items pretty fast. So I always like to have, several uh, sets of items on the side, just in case I can't go thrifting for some reason. So huh. yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm never going to pass up a half price sale. I mean, if I have a big death pile, I'm still going to go because I just can't pass up a half price sale. That's because I barely get to thrift, you know? So, so Beth, I don't know if you've seen the interview I did with uh, Lux Hunt Huntress, but she was like, I'll just grab some items from my stash. That she, she, she said the word stash as opposed to death pile. You but know, I call it I call it my pay stack. But um <laughs> so, so that's what I call mine. So one of my amazing new admins just said, Do you have any long term goals with eBay? So what's your 2018 goals for eBay? Um my 2000 18 by the end of December, I wanted to have 1500 items in my store. I'm just a little under 1200 right now. I was at 1200, but I haven't been able to list in a while because my wife had surgery and I'm kind of behind. Um, my also, my goal was to have $4,000 um, a month in gross by December. So June was supposed to be 3000. Well, now I'm at 2600 already and it's only April. So I pretty sure I'm going to hit the 4,000. Um, but, and to really be comfortable, I'd really feel comfortable doing 6,000 gross a month, really to be comfortable enough to, if anything happened and I didn't have a job for some reason, I'd really like to have at least 6,000 gross. I, I, it's just my, it's my backup plan, you know, because if anything ever happens with my, my job, I'm not going back to corporate again. I'm just not going to do it. 
So I've got a little tip on that, guys, because I was thinking the other day, <clears throat> what if the market just tanked, right? Like, what if, what if, you know, people just didn't have the money to buy clothes? And so the way you can combat that, because a lot of us are selling stuff that isn't necessities, it's wants, right? So the clothing that we're selling, a lot of the stuff that we're selling, a good portion of the resellers are selling um, stuff that's not necessities, it's wants. And I, one thing that I want to work on in 2018 to combat that is to be on multiple platforms to help a little bit. Obviously, the market is what it is, but also to work on stuff that's not wants, but it's needs. For example, um, I'm not going to sell car parts, but people need car parts. They need their vehicle running. So that's a need, not a want. And so I want to incorporate, you know, working on three different platforms, eBay, Poshmark, and um, Amazon, and then also focusing a little bit on need, not wants. But that's my 2018 goals. And then obviously, um, I think the biggest thing that <clears throat> people make the mistake on, that I made the mistake on, was Q3, they'll ramp up for Q4. But I actually want to focus on Q4 and Q2. So I want to focus on all these clearance items that are winter clothing for Q4. I want to focus on buying that now and getting that listed for Q4 in Q2 as opposed to waiting until the next quarter and then only having two months and then boom, it's time, right? I mean, you obviously want to work on that Q3, but I want to, uh, I want to work on, you know, the end of the year starting now to give uh to give some people some that's how i am with um i'm getting ready to list uh halloween costumes pretty soon <laughs> so yes, yes. All right, uh, do you do you uh, uh last year we we uh we went with cade and uh it was so funny beth like we went up to this house in the neighborhood and they had this big massive spider and it was one of those where you step on like a little pad and it jumps out at you and um i thought for sure it would scare cade and he, it didn't even phase him, and so this year I'm determined to uh, to find something that will uh, that will startle him just a little bit for Halloween. But he's uh, he's a trooper. I don't know. It's it's fun watching kids grow up. But, I, I see new subscribers to my channel. I just want to thank you for subscribing to my channel. That's real exciting. And um, if you have a YouTube, I will uh, subscribe back to you as well. So we yes. can all help each other out. Yes. Yeah, so so why we why we're on this topic, Beth? I put your, your link in the description, guys. Click it, subscribe. That's what we're here for. We're here to lift people up. And um, so tell us a little bit about your YouTube goals, what you're wanting to accomplish, um, what you're going to be doing on your YouTube, that sort of thing. Um, well, I think I already went over it, but I'm just, I really want to reach out to people who are having trouble making this work, especially with time management. It's just so hard. Someone asked me a few minutes ago how many items I list a day. I don't list a certain amount of items a day. I didn't list today, for instance. And um, today I worked on a, on a YouTube video when I got home, uploaded it for my 100 acre uh, flea market fail that I just came back from. Um, but tomorrow, um, you better believe it, I'll be listing. But I don't know how, I can't tell you how many items. I've drafted about 20 and I'll come home and take the pictures. And while Finney's recovering and sleeping from his anesthetic, I'll probably list maybe 20 or 25. I've already got them drafted. So I've already done the worst part, you know, the hardest part. All I have to do is just upload the photos and um, upload them to Poshmark or wherever I want to upload them and, and just review them real quickly and make sure I haven't made any mistakes. So that takes, you know, maybe two or three minutes per item if that long. So and, and do you have any, um, I'm curious, I asked this, do you have any websites that you like using? I know you gave one away, but do you have any cool like tools that you use when you resell anything to do research on? Um, no, not really. I've just been using the growth feature tab in eBay to help me with my prices. And ever since I did that, I've had a lot more sales. I think my prices were a lot higher uh, than I realized. And um, I think what I was doing was I was pricing my items a little higher so that, you know, when I eventually ran a sale, then I was, you know, getting less. So I was pricing them higher instead of pricing them the right price in the beginning, you know, and then they're just sitting there for a month. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where I was going wrong on that. 
Yeah, you have but to no, I don't them. really use any other other than YouTube. I don't really use any other websites. I I, I mean, I sometimes I'll use Title Builder, but very rarely. So uh, I just get more information from real people. Yeah. But do you guys? I, I've got a question for chat. Do you guys use um, Honey App by chance? Honey App uh, or the web browser? I'm not curious to see. Curious to see if anybody in chat uses it. Um, so, Beth and chat, if you guys have questions for Beth, please put it in chat. I would love to ask her. But Beth, what we've got about 10, 10 more minutes left. And uh, Chris, has, by the way, he he subscribed to you, Beth. Thank you. Chris subscribed. I watch him almost every day at work. <laughs> yes. Oh, that that's the other thing I would like to say. Um, and, and I don't even know if I've done it. I need to check. Because I watch videos at work, I cannot turn you guys up full blast. So I will usually ask you if you'll please put closed captions on. That really helps me. Some people don't put closed captions on their videos, and I miss so much. So please, you know, consider doing that for people like me. Because <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble at work, but I, you know, I... I have so many people I want to watch and um, I'm, I'm lucky I'm in a job where I can do that, where I can watch, you know, and work because I'm the only employee in the office, but I still can't turn you guys up full blast. So. Uh, well, we have, uh, we have a couple questions. They're asking what's the honey app? <laughs> what's the what? What's the honey app? And I, um, quite honestly, I found about it. I found out about it today. And what I think it does is what Chris alluded to was it basically it's, I think it's a it attaches to your your um, web browser. Thought I had to sneeze, but I didn't. Um, and then um, it will search codes for products and find out what the best deal is on what website. And I could be wrong. I need to look at it. Um, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong. But um, so you can download the app, I believe, or it attaches to your web browser, and then you can search, let's say, diapers, and it'll show you where online is it the cheapest. Isn't that amazing? I mean, I could be wrong. I haven't actually used it. I found out about it today. It's a shopping app, yeah. Um, so let me know, guys, if I'm if I'm wrong or right. But um, so we have um, let's see, Ka um, Catherine or excuse me, Catherine said I subscribed as well. Um, and Thank you, Catherine. Uh, that is awesome. Flipping. See, Lisa Melendez, Dev Dev, and Nancy Joe also subscribed. Thank you, guys. Yes, yes. And do you do you have I know you're super busy, but do you Thanks, have like, Dad. when do you think you're going to upload cuz I think the biggest thing for YouTube is consistency. Uh you mean what day of the week I'm going to upload? Yeah, do you have like a schedule to upload on your YouTube? Um not since the surgery. I have a list though of videos that I want to do. I've been trying to I'm trying to Right now, just one a week <laughs> is about all I'm going to be able to handle until she recuperates, and then we'll just see after that. And I also have to see, you know, what people want, I think. Um, you know, what hasn't been done before? I mean, I don't want to do the same thing everybody else is doing. And I, and I don't feel comfortable doing haul videos because I'm still new at this, and I don't really know what sells. I don't mind doing what's sold, but, um, you know, other than my – my flea market deal this weekend. That was the only haul video I've done. So, so what I recommend yeah. for people that simply don't have a lot of time to schedule events like this on YouTube and would like to start a YouTube channel is once you get to hundred subscribers, you can go live on your phone. And I think one of the best ways that you can do this is to take your phone and when you thrift, just simply go live you would be surprised how many people binge watch YouTube channels that are simply just thrifting. You don't even have to talk. You can just hold the phone up and thrift and people will watch you in the store as you thrift. And there is um, attachments that you can get that attaches to carts. Just Google it. Attachments to the phone that will attach to a shopping cart. And you can just literally thrift and go live on YouTube. And people That's a great idea. Yeah. And I would like to do some live shows because I, I think that's – that's really more fun to me because you get to see the questions, you get to talk to people and meet people and, you know, I'd rather do that anyway. But I mean, I can't think I, until tonight, I think I had 12 subscribers. So I didn't think those 12 people would be watching <laughs> a live show. <laughs> it, it's funny. People think that 
and I was this way too. When you have 50 subscribers, you're like, well, that's not a lot because you're looking at YouTubers that have thousands, right? Right. But the thing with it is imagine if you're in a room thrifting or if you're alive and there's 50 people just staring at you, right? Because there's almost 80 people watching now. So when you first start out, don't think of 50 is not a lot because it's it's a good starting point. And imagine if you're in a room with 50 people talking, right? Most people couldn't do that. So um, we do have a question for you. Beth, what's your favorite place to source? Um, I'd have to say Texas Thrift in Houston is my favorite place to source on holidays like on the Martin Luther King Memorial Day, Veterans Day. They always have half price sales and I always come out of there with a lot. Like this past weekend on Good Friday, I came out with a lot of plush um an awful lot of push i got there at six in the morning there was a huge line to get in and it was so funny to see all these resellers everyone went to a different section you know everybody had their own section and i went to the plush first and this other guy he went to the luggage first and this other lady went to the the purses first it was just hysterical everyone had earbuds in their ears and we don't have bins in Houston and I'm kind of glad we don't because I don't know if I would be a bin person with my anxiety. I don't know if I could handle, handle that. I don't know. Chris and I have been talking about going to the ones in Austin and uh, giving that a go, but I don't know from what everybody says, it's pretty wild. I really am not that kind of person to fight over things and, you know, push people aside and all that. <laughs> so, yeah, I did have a lady threaten to kick my, you know, what at Texas Thrift because she wanted my cart. But other than that, that's the most I've had. Now, if you guys look at uh, Beth's eBay store, um, what? I don't know if I was on your eBay store. No, sorry, your Instagram. You take really nice white photos. I love it. And we have um, uh, Flipping Daily asks, what's the most you have sold a plush for? Well, I haven't been selling them very long, but um, I think probably there was a unicorn I sold or a horse. I can't remember. It's been a long time ago, and it was about $30. Um, right now, I have a woolly mammoth. He's 53 inches long and 23 inches tall. He's beautiful. I paid $4 for him, and I put him up on my website, and then someone said, how do you plan to ship that? And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I never even thought of that. So I took him down <laughs> because I need to get a box. And I will also like to say one more thing that the hardest thing for me um, working full time, I, I started doing um, one day handling to get my top rated plus up, which we all know that's going to go away in a month, but I didn't know if I could handle it. And so what I do is um, all my clothing is one day handling. Okay. And I set my alarm for five 30 in the morning and anything that sells but before 1 2 a.m. in the morning here is considered the day before because it goes by Pacific time. So that means I have to be up and ship it, get the label on before 7 a.m. before I leave for work at 7 a.m., 7.15. So I wake up in the middle of the night around 3 or 4 and look to see if I've sold anything over the night. If someone's offered something, I don't, I don't answer the offer until after 2 a.m., because I don't want it to go. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to ship it that day um, until I get home from work. I don't want to have to create that label. It's been so stressful. <laughs> so I, I don't know if anybody else has that issue, but. I, 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 I completely understand. Um, I'm I, still trying to figure out if I want to do this free return bit. If I don't, then I may just not do one day handling and then save myself the stress because all that has to happen is I get up at five 30, my printer doesn't work or we don't have internet or something. And I'm at, and then, and then that's, I get a ding on my account because I can't get it packed up before 7am. That's real stressful. Yep. Um, so I used to, I used to, um, uh, package my items and ship it out in the morning. And I don't do that anymore because I was finding that the mornings are when you're fresh. Like that's when you should be working out, eating healthy, but more importantly, listing or doing stuff that I, I think when you're full time or even when you're part time, you probably want to focus on what makes you money first. What makes you money? Yes, shipping is important. It's part of the business, but that doesn't necessarily make you money. Um, I obviously listing makes you money. So I started, you know, listing in the mornings. I do a little bit at night and then uh, primarily shipping and packaging late at night then so it's ready in the morning. Um, 
so that way you're kind of fresh, kind of like what you said, right? Do your drafts when you're fresh. Yeah, I pack everything up at night. But if anything sells between midnight and two, I've got to pack it up before I leave in the morning. Yep. Um, and and I and I work when I go to work, the post office is closed, and when I get out, the post office is closing. So I can't go to a window and have somebody scan. So I have to go to a drop box. And if that drop box is stuck closed because somebody put a big box in there, boy, I that I get a ding every time because I can't wait for somebody to open the window so they can take my box. I got to be at work by, you know, quarter to eight, eight o'clock. So it's, it's stressful. And that's really common. Actually, I'm always going there and it gets stuck. But ever since I've been a top rated plus seller, uh, since I think January, my sales have gone way up, mm -hmm. but it, it's been stressful. I'm not sure it's worth it. You know, I'm just not sure it's worth the stress. I mean, it gave me more money, but mm -hmm. You know, do I really want to do that right now? At least I know I can do it. If I have to. So for me, the, I get questions all the time. I think all the YouTubers do. Like, what do you recommend for the new requirements? And um, I've already went free returns three weeks ago. I feel like this. If I if I told somebody, hey, there is going to be a deadline, and to, to meet this deadline, you have to get this done. I would rather start that deadline or try that deadline a few weeks before the deadline to see if it's something I want to do. So as opposed to waiting until you technically would need to go free returns, go free returns now and gauge the business. So that way when it is mandatory, you'll know exactly what you want to do as opposed to waiting until the deadline. So just a little yeah. I did do free returns for about three weeks. I didn't really see an up in my sales, but that's probably because you know, every, you know, not everybody needs to do it right now to get top rated plus. Um, and I didn't see that many more free returns, but I'll tell you what, the returns I got, the people were nastier. It's like they are, they knew they were going to get a return no matter what. So they were just like saying some really, you know, mean things in their messages. I was like, I never had that before. Anyway, I turned my free returns off after about three weeks because I wasn't really, I thought, well, I'm, you know, if I'm going to do it, I'll just wait until you know, maybe two weeks before and then turn them back on. At least because, you, had, you had that time to try it, right? That's yeah, I tried it and I know I, you know, I can do it. And, but I figure, you know, why invite it right now if I don't have to, but I, I, I will do it when it, I mean, I will, because I know a lot of people won't, you know, and so I will. Yep. All right. So I want to, we got a few more moments. I want to touch on this guys. Um, those of you who follow me on Instagram, I put a post, I was like, Hey, if the, the most, one of the most expensive things about eBay open is the hotel. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so like, um, those of you who don't know, Ashley, me, the whole family is going to eBay open. And if you don't have somebody going with you that can split the hotel cost, it can get expensive. Um, and so guys in the comments below, um, both on my Instagram and on this video, if you would like to go to eBay open, but you need somebody to help split some of the cost of the hotel, or you want somebody to hang out with, um, then put it in comments below. So that way people can find you, DM you, and you can see if it's a good match. Um, it, I think that if that you can alleviate some cost, you'll find that more people will go. This year's going to be great. Um, I'm super excited to meet Chris. I've uh, been friends with him for a while. I'm probably the closest to him than anybody. And I finally get to meet him in person. There's going to be so many great people like Lindy um, is going. I think Prof Sells is going. There's so many people going this year. Um, and even if you're not a YouTuber, not a big Instagrammer, I highly recommend you to go. I really hope that you do reach out to me if you do go. I know that in person sometimes it's different. I'm extremely approachable. Um, I'm the uh, chubby white guy. Hopefully I can lose some weight before eBay open. But um, you guys definitely reach out to me. I'd love to meet you, shake your hands, and we'll get some free Vegas drinks going. Beth, I really hope you go too. I really hope you do. I do too. I'm hoping to. <laughs> and Barry, who's got the world's best beard, that thing is luscious. Um, he's going. He needs a roommate. Um, he's somebody to help split a hotel cost with. So, guys, if you – if you're a gentleman and you want to go and you need a roommate, reach out to Barry. He's in chat. Um, but that you can, being, you can DM me on my Instagram at ten dot of dot hearts. 
Yes. That's my Instagram account. Yes. I, I, guys, there's there's more to eBay Open than just what you're going to get out of it. Everybody, reselling is somewhat lonely. Um, you know, working at home is somewhat lonely. Um, yes, you have your family, but you need to sometimes branch out to people that are not necessarily connected to you. Uh, and so it's a great opportunity to meet people. Um, networking is key. I don't think, you know, in life, if you don't network, you're going to have a little bit harder time networking. I think getting to know how different people do their, you know, work their business strategies. And the fact that you can, when I meet Chris, although I know him extremely well, he's in chat, but when I meet him in person, um, you'll form a, a, a bigger bonds shaking somebody's hands. So I hope everybody goes to eBay open and Beth, I will hope you find an amazing, um, amazing somebody to go with too. Cause I think that would be really cool if you do go. Thank you. So that being said, Beth, do you have any parting words? I, I, this is the last question I ask you. Do you have any words of inspiration that you can give to the, uh, the viewers here? Um, I, I would just like to say that, you know, if you're like me, you're a small seller, don't compare yourself to these superpower sellers. Uh, they're doing this for a living and they, they, this is how they make their living. And if you have an eight to five, you you're making your living on your eight to five and just don't compare yourself. You don't have as many hours in the day to devote to this as they do. Just, you just, there's no comparison really. So don't be down on yourself. Just do what you can do, make small goals. And next, when you meet that one, make a bigger goal and, um, you know, come visit my channel. We're going to have a lot of fun and come tell me what you want to learn. So what you want to talk about. I think that's really cool, Beth. I, I watched this show called The Shield and it was very similar. Um, one of the moms on that show said, um, take smaller steps in the right direction than try to take a big step and not make the direction. So I think it's really, really cool that you did that. And uh, I really appreciate you coming on here. I appreciate everybody. We almost had 90 people watching today, which is one of the, the larger shows. And so guys, subscribe to Beth. Please uh, hit the like button. We don't, as creators, get paid more. It just goes out in YouTube lands and pe more people will see this video. Um, it's really my passion this year to highlight amazing people like Beth and, and others. So I appreciate everybody joining. Tomorrow we'll have an interview. Wednesday we'll have an interview. And um, we're going to keep rolling on this until the end of the year and beyond. So you guys have a great night. Beth, you want to say Thank goodbye? you so much for having me. Thank you, everyone. Hope to see you on my channel. And I'll see you in chat next time at Wade's also. And make sure you subscribe and to the channel.